Hi, I'm Ken Miller, Director of Entertainment for the Broadmoor Hotel. Welcome to Broadmoor Entertainment's Interview Cafe. Maureen McGovern's career spans 37 years, including recordings, concerts, the Broadway stage, film, television, radio, and songwriting, all with a voice that defies categorization. Her newly released CD, A Long and Winding Road, is now available on PS Classics, and it's garnering rave reviews. Grammy nominated for Best New Artist and Best Traditional Pop Vocal Performance, she received a Grammy for Best Musical Recording for Children for her participation in the CD-DVD Songs from the Neighborhood, The Music of Mr. Rogers. Her recording career began with the number one Oscar-winning gold record, The Morning After, from the classic disaster film The Poseidon Adventure, and the Oscar-winning gold record, We May Never Love Like This Again, from The Towering Inferno. She introduced the Oscar-nominated song, Wherever Love Takes Me, in the film, Gold. Other hits include Can You Read My Mind from Superman and Different Worlds from the television series, Angie. Other critically acclaimed recordings include tributes to George Gershwin, Harold Arlen, Richard Rogers, and Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Maureen received a gold record for her participation in the Disney record CD, Take My Hand, Songs from the Hundred Acre Wood. In 2005, Ms. McGovern returned to the Broadway stage as Marmee in Little Women, the musical, for which she received a Drama Desk nomination. Maureen made her Broadway debut as Mabel in The Pirates of Penzance, starred as Louisa Contini in Nine with the late Raul Julia, and as Polly Peachum opposite Sting in The Three Penny Opera. She also starred as Mrs. Anna in the national tour of The King and I. Feature film roles include Airplane, playing Sister Angelina, the guitar strumming nun, Airplane 2, the sequel, and The Towering Inferno. Ms. McGovern gives back, too. She is the president and founder of the Maureen McGovern Works of Heart Foundation for Music and Healing. She serves on the National Board of the Muscular Dystrophy Association and is an artist spokesperson for the American Music Therapy Association. For more on Miss McGovern, please visit www.maureenmcgovern.com. And here is our interview. Hello, I'm Ken Miller, and today we get to interview Maureen McGovern and Jeff Harris. We just did a wonderful Christmas show together, and it's just an honor to have you both here. Thank you so much for coming Thank to the you. Interview Cafe. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. what we call it, the Interview oh. Cafe. <laughs> we have had fun. This has been a, a wonderful experience. Oh, especially for us in the band. I mean, we've just had the time of our lives, and thank you so much. Um, one of the questions that I ask here is about your creative process, and I understand that you both work together in, in songwriting and, and new projects, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. We've known each other since 1979, just when he graduated from high school. He's kind of College. First job out of college. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I whipped him into shape. Yes. <laughs> He's come and gone through the years I like, oh, God, the, I can't I take it. I But, um, you know, there's, this, there's a real intimate relationship between singer and, and musical director, and he really... You know, you really think like one mind when you're out there. And I mean, he's he's followed me through <laughs> in my older years through a lot of strange lyrics. Which actually makes it tougher. I, I, I always tell people I was completely spoiled working with Marine is like right. my first job because every singer since has been a disappointment. Yeah, I, I <laughs> no, I work with yeah. I work with, I work with some very well-known singers who were not terribly good musicians like Maureen is and she's just natural and it's just right. it's just right. makes sense that everything's there and then suddenly you just assume that that's the way it is with the other singers and then it's not and then it's just like it's like what's wrong with these people <laughs> <laughs> they're not Maureen what's up however sometimes he becomes prompter like the other night <laughs> oh. <laughs> where the lyrics you know become derailed somewhere but uh, sure. so but he's always I mean he's 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 a great listener so I mean he's he's 
always there. I mean, you, can, you, oh. you can relax because, you know, there's a safety net underneath Such you, a you treat. Know? Born in the Heart is just so gorgeous. Oh. And, and you both wrote that song. Well, he wrote The Lion's Share of it. It, it started, I actually, uh, a publisher sent me some children's books. And uh, a book of, it's based on the book, Couldn't We Make a Difference? Isn't that what it's called? Couldn't we? I think, I think it's called. Could. Oh, Michelle Pace Hofbauer wrote it, and it's it's a long narrative poem, very long, and it's beautiful. And and I was very taken with it, and so I called her and I said, "Could you turn this into a lyric?" And she went, "I've never written a lyric before. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know from that." So I kind of shaped the lyrics because the introduction to the book said the dedication was, "Born in the heart of every child." is the power to change the world. And I said, well, that's a great chorus. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I shaped the lyrics, and I started writing the chorus. And this was uh, in the summer of 2001. And I was working on a piece, a theater piece called uh, Letters from Nam that premiered in uh, Boston two days before September 11th. And wow. I was also learning The Lion in Winter, which followed oh. on the heels of a four-week performance of that. So I was a little bit cross-eyed at the I time, and and obviously the agita and the the um, awfulness of December oh, or September 11th. Um, I knew more than ever that the song had to be written at right. that moment, but I had no concentration <laughs> genes left. Oh, so I, I called him, and I, he is my favorite songwriter in the entire world. I agree. Uh, Just beautiful. He, he, just a gift from the heavens comes through this man in, in his compositions. Just and not so, often enough. <laughs> not often enough, that is true. I do. <laughs> oh. I'm a little nudge. Come on, I'm going to write some songs. But what, what comes out of him is exquisite. It's and, beautiful. And so I said, Jeff, I, I, here's what I started to have at it. And so he turned it into the exquisite piece that it is. Well, except I, I actually, you, you really shaped the lyrics nicely. They took them as stanzas, and I really, I always need a text first. I can't, it's oh, like really? some composers like Michel Legrand, you know, he'll, right. he writes the melody, he gives it to the Bergmans, exactly, you know. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And Maureen was at one point saying, Jeff, you should write with, try and write with the Bergmans, and she mentioned the, me to the Bergmans, and I go, well, have them send us a melody. <laughs> I go, well, I, no, have, have them send me a lyric. I can't write. But anyway, oh, Maureen really organized it beautifully, and I need a text for it. So it was all there, and I just, that's all she gave me. I don't think she gave me any music. And I came up with the whole thing, and I came up with this beautiful thing. And, but as is often the case, it was a little too dark and serious sounding. And Maureen said, well, I love it. I love the verse, but the chorus, it, was, it should soar more. It should be like, born in the heart of every child. And that, that, and there and it that, is. That was, that was enough. That was the hook line, you know. And I, I, I go, yeah, okay. And then, and put that in as the hook, and then it all, then the chorus just came, and that was it, you know. It's, oh, that's great. But it was her really just saying it should be more like born. It was a different rhythm, shaped different. And I thought, yeah, no, that's the way it should be. Yeah. So. And it's wonderful with the, when you have the children's chorale or a yeah. children's group. We've done group. it all over the yeah. country and yeah. with different. And the original, my daughter, who at the yeah. time was only like eight I think or yeah. nine she sang on it on the rec oh, recording the of it yeah. oh, and she was awesome. sick that day and she could barely get it out she was really <laughs> nervous and we had the United Nations choir there the children's choir family. and yeah. we had oh. someone on hold to sing the solo in case she couldn't do it and she, and she was so upset and, so and I think we even recorded someone else sing the, the solo safety, and then she yeah. said I can do it I can do it and she came up and she just sang it in this little so I was saying goodbye oh. to the kids. They were they were leaving, and I came back in, and they, he said, "We got it." <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, and what are you working on right now? We just finished recording an album called "A Long and Winding Road," and there's a, we've been doing concert version of it, and I'm working on a, a theater piece with uh, Philip Himberg uh, from Sundance. He's directing and oh. co-writing it with me, expanding that concert into a theater piece uh, for regional theaters. We're going to be at the Huntington in Boston in March and. And, uh, arena stage in DC in, in in April to start out and expanding it with visuals with monologues. Still just Marine. Yeah. Still one woman. One woman show. show. It's, it's actually just uh, Jeff and myself on stage. Oh, that's and I love wonderful. things stripped down to the the bare essence Minimalism. and just just let it yeah. Yeah, happen.